So in this video, I want to show you a tool that's absolutely amazing and impressive and groundbreaking and mind blowing. It's a tool that I believe will change completely how we see academia, how we see academic writing, how we study, how we write, how we assess students' progress. It's an AI writing tool that I find to be really impressive. I absolutely love it. So I'll show you quickly what it is, where to find it. And at the end, I'll also comment on how I feel about uh, the ethics of using this tool. If you're a member of my Patreon group, uh, which is absolutely free, by the way, you probably saw me last week reviewing this tool. If you're not, uh, feel free to have a look and join that community for uh, updates, sometimes early releases, and additional content that I don't always share on either Facebook or YouTube. But now let's have a look at the tool itself. So it may look a little bit familiar. If you remember, I did review SciSpace and other videos on this channel. So it's it's overall what I believe to be the best tool for, for learning, for studying, for exploring the literature. Like I said, I do have a separate review or several videos in which I explain why it's so good for exploring the literature specifically. Now what they did, they added this component. They added this AI writer component, which makes the whole thing even more impressive because now you can write. And as I'll show you, you can uh, directly, this may directly link to all that uh, database of research and scientific publications. So, so now it's even better uh, than it was. And in terms of the pricing, it is a paid tool, but it's also it has a free version. As I explained last time, you can play around with the free version. It's still really good. So for small tasks, I believe you can just do with without even paying. If you do decide to, to pay for it, you can find the link under the video. And uh, for, I believe, 20, uh, $20 a month, it includes everything. So it includes access to, to that literature, it includes access to that AI writer. So you've got everything for that price. Like I said, it's completely up to you if you want to uh, pay for it or not. But let's have a look quickly just to explore what it actually does. So it's called AI Writer, as you can see, and let's just start writing. So as I explained in that video on my Patreon, uh, the most impressive part, the most impressive thing about this tool uh, are uh, the suggestions, so the suggested text, and also the quick access to citations. So let's, uh, for suggestions, let's just quickly start writing something. So English as a lingua franca, for example, as a lingua franca is, and then we're waiting and it gives us suggestions, just like Microsoft Word does, except that it gives us so much more and longer and better suggestions that are directly link to the literature, to all that database of scientific literature. So you can see I can accept this suggestion is becoming increasingly important in global communication. That's fine. So uh, I will press uh, tab and then I can just wait for more suggestions. I can uh, just keep going like that. To be honest, it would literally probably write me a decent essay. But of course, that's not uh, the point. You can see how good it is. And it's not just something that it just randomly comes up with. It's something that is directly drawn from the literature. I showed you in my other videos uh, size space before. And if you watch these videos, you know that if you go to the literature, explain, li uh, explore literature through this tool, uh, what it gives you is this option also to ask questions, for example, about English and Lingua Franca. And, and this AI tool will give you relevant literature. So it so really uh, knows, so to speak, what it's doing. So of course, I don't want to do this forever. I don't want it to completely write things for me because it doesn't even know what I want to write. But I'll just show you if I change the direction slightly or suggest where this is going, I can say uh, others, for example, others, for example, have explored it in classroom contexts. And I'll just, I'll just leave it here. And you'll see that it continues in a very intelligent way. So it says in these settings, educators are ad adapting their teaching methods to incorporate English as a tool and then so on and so forth. So it makes complete uh, sense. And now let's say I don't want to accept this suggestions. I want this to change direction once more. So I'll say, however, and let's see what it says. Of course, normally going into this uh, writing, I would have a decent idea of what I want to say. So this, is, this just shows you how impressive it is. But in normal circumstances, I would be much more specific, not just letting it finish my sentences like that. But you can see that it makes perfect sense. So however, there are challenges to consider such as 
it gives us the challenges. What we'll do now, we do want a, a citation for this. So what we'll do now is we'll just press this symbol and you can see that there are suggested citations. So this is the part that's also absolutely amazing. So it's not giving us just any citations. If I showed you, if I press the same button, so it's basically the at symbol at the beginning, before I wrote anything, it would just give me some random citations, but here it's giving me citations that are relevant. So I can click on it. If I like it, if I know it, I can click on it straight away. And it also gives us, uh, adds the reference at the end of our document. So it's also creating the, the reference list live as we're writing. So now let's start a sentence with a citation. So I'll just use the symbol again and pick something and I'll say, I'll choose this, this person and I'll say states that, and again, it's digging the literature and gives us the suggestion. And it's actually telling us uh, what is, what is real, what is true. So, so that's why it's so impressive. Now I can delete it. If I don't like it, I can delete it completely. And you will see that also deletes it from the list of references. You can see that in the time when I literally just can take a sip of coffee or tea, it gives, it continues to give me more suggestions. So now uh, one more thing that I want to show you is we can take a, a reference and say, you're not sure what it is. I can't remember what it is. So I can click on it. And from this view, I can directly go to site space database. So if I'm not sure what it is, I don't know if I want to cite it. I can just click on it and just click on it again just go directly to their database. And again, I have this whole video in which I explain how good a tool this is. So you can explore the literature, you can compare, you can ask questions, you can ask it to, to sift through the literature and prepare certain types of articles. You can just quick ask a quick question, as you can see here on the right, I can ask, is this an empirical study? Because maybe I'm not sure, I just quickly want to know. So rather than going through all these uh, all these, uh, all this literature, all these articles, you can see that I'm just switching between writing and reading seamlessly. So it does give me some answers and summary explains whether it's signed, uh, it's empirical or not. There's so much more. Again, it's, it's a separate tool that I described in a, in a dedicated video, but you can see how good it is. So I can quickly switch from this view to that view. You can also see that there's uh, another suggestion already waiting for me to accept or dismiss it. Again, uh, as I said, normally uh, our writing, of course, tends to be much more focused. So I would know I would be much more in charge of where this is going. I wouldn't just be clicking accept, accept, accept. But this just shows you and just, just uh, for the purpose of presentation gives us the idea of just how good this tool can be. Don't forget to check out my ebook entitled Scholar's Guide to AI Assisted Thematic Analysis, which is a useful resource for thematic analysis, whether you do plan to use AI or not. It contains plenty of useful advice, step by step instructions for thematic analysis, and a list of prompts that you can copy and paste into ChatGPT. And now, as I said at the beginning, uh, to quickly address, and I'm sure I'll come back to this tool, uh, a much more detailed instruction about this tool specifically, but also I'll come back to more discussions about, I would say, the moral implications and the ethics of this. But to to briefly answer the question, am I worried about this? Do I see this as unethical? I don't. I don't. And I don't see why I would. So why would I see this as unethical? Do I see the use of calculators as unethical? Do I see the use of uh, software for data analysis that I use, uh, MaxQDA and Atlas and and Vivo as unethical? Do I see the use of Grammarly or Microsoft Word for that matter unethical so that we can use a computer instead of just writing things by hand? Of course not. So I don't think there is anything unethical in using tools that are essentially helping us become more effective, more efficient and more productive. Using, uh, doing the analysis, uh, using certain software or certain tools, it gives us more time to do things that are even more important, even more impressive. We can analyze more data. We can gather more data, more evidence. We can add more evidence to the claims that we're making. We can uh, develop our understanding of the phenomena that we're exploring 
even better, access to Google, access to literature online, as opposed to going to the library, same thing. We can just sit there and quickly read the literature. We can be even more productive, even more scientific, even more intelligent, if you like. Probably not intelligent. It's more about being educated and, and just reading a lot. However, you, I hope that you get my point. Using this tool just helps us communicate our ideas quicker and in a more efficient way. The first thing that you, you probably wonder, the first thing that uh, academic, some academic instructors and teachers will uh, think about is, of course, well, it's cheating. It's, of course, che cheating because this thing is writing things for you. You're not even writing. It's not you that's writing. But if you really think about it, do we really care about who's writing that? Or do we care about uh, just putting our ideas across. So you've done this study or you've developed this idea for a study. Is it important if you're writing these things in your own words or is it important that you communicate the value of the study, communicate the findings so that again we can add more evidence to these uh, to this database of, of research of evidence. So uh, so I absolutely don't see this again don't perceive this as a problem. Also what I said earlier, you're not going to let it write everything for you anyway. It's just something that will enhance your writing, something that will, will help you a little bit, help you with some ideas. You'll be revising it, you'll be looking at it, you'll be monitoring it. So so if you use it responsibly, there's absolutely no problem. Will it change everything as I said at the beginning? I believe it will because we don't want to now assess people for how they write or how good their academic writing is. But again, do I see this as something that's not moral or something wrong? I absolutely do not. I know it's a big leap in how we see things because it's kind of difficult to even imagine uh, why is it a good thing? Why do you think it's acceptable? But like I said, if you really stand, uh, stand back and just completely objectively look at this topic and think, do we really need to have this this form of assessing our our what intelligence or skill by how good how well we can write it's not even fair in the first place because some people are just not as good as at writing which does not make them less valuable uh, scientists or students so i absolutely don't see anything wrong with this